shit's hurting. And then Layden's face flashed in my head. Like I've seen my son's face and my body instantly calmed down. And then I thought, oh fuck, you signed the waiver. This is why you signed the waiver because you might die. Like people have probably died. This is my background music. Cause I don't wanna get copyrighted. So I made my own shit to this beat. Kinda land low key, but join the team. Subscribe, subscribe. What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel. I'm Deja. I'm very much so happy to be alive. Happy that I'm able to tell you guys this story. Today is like the 4th of November, something like that. But I know on October 31st, your girl almost died. <laughs> I was gonna be a goner. The Lord himself saved me, honey. I'm just going to be telling you guys about that story today. So if this is something you wanna hear, keep watching but let me just stop rambling and just get right into the story i don't really want this to be a very long story time honestly but i guess story times could be long because they're like story times you know you probably watching this while you're washing dishes cleaning your house eating your food that's what i do <laughs> but yeah if you're new to my channel if you've never seen my face before what's good i'm deja um so hit that subscribe button open the description box follow me on my all my other social media accounts and yeah Let's just get right into the story. So, boom. Let me just paint the picture for you guys. It is a chilly, chilly October night. It was very much so giving Halloween. Like, it was crazy because it was like the day before Halloween, so it was the 30th. But, you know, this led into the 31st. Like, we was out late, okay? Me and Bree decided, if you don't know who Bree is, that's like one of my best friends, also my roommate. So, we decided, hmm, let's go to LA because there's not really much to do in Vegas that we've, like, never done before. We don't really know a lot of people out here. So, like, the party atmosphere, other than, like, clubs and stuff, like, we wanted to do, like, a Halloween party, you know? The parties, we don't really know because we don't really know anyone out here. But the clubs and stuff, I was like, we do that all the time. Let's go to LA. So, on this Saturday, it was Saturday because Halloween was on a Sunday. But on Saturday, we were like, all right, boom. We pack our stuff. Very spontaneous. Me and Brie are very spontaneous people, and we just get up and go do stuff. So, we are like, come on, boom, pack our bag. We literally have, like change of clothes for the night, pajamas, a uh, change of clothes to drive home, and our costumes. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, I have a son. His name is Layden. He's three years old, and that's my baby. Me and his dad do co-parent, so right now he's with his dad. So I was like, I want to see my baby trick-or-treat. This is kind of like his first Halloween, really, like going out, being able to do stuff. So I was like, I want to take my baby trick-or-treating. So it was like a two bird, one stone type of thing. Went to a Halloween party and then we also took later trick-or-treating. Some friends hit me up and was like, hey, you want to go to this like haunted house type of thing? They sent me the flyer and I should have known there that it was bad because it looked kind of scary. And I go in the room and I tell Brie, hey, like they just got tickets for this. And I show her and she's like, oh shit. And I'm like, what bitch because i don't do good for haunted houses like when back when i was little i went through this one haunted house at universal i don't know if they still have it up but it really like traumatized me it was like their maze one in the mansion it traumatized me so i was telling her like uh what is this and she's like oh that's like one of the scariest haunted houses in california she was like it's bad like i've been seeing that on tiktok youtube like it's bad <laughs> Don't want to go. Let's stay home. I was like, oh no. Anxiety went to a 10. Anyway, let's just fast forward to us getting down to LA. Before we get into it more, the reason why I sound like this is from this night. I mean, I sound very congested, but I think this might be my voice for the rest of my life because of this night. I feel like I sound like I'm sick, but I'm not sick at all. Like I feel fine. I'm not congested. I can breathe. <laughs> But listen, so we get here on this night. Um, it's very cold. It's like 60 something degrees. I remember looking at that because I was like, damn, it's cold as hell out here. Um, I'm not really sure if I can say the name of this place because I had to sign waivers. I really didn't read the waiver in depth, but um, they told us that we're not allowed to like use our phones, record any of that. If they do catch us recording, they take our phone, throw it away. Like we're not getting it back because we signed the waiver. So I read the waiver and the first thing I seen was death. And then um, I seen death a good six more times. And I was just sitting there in the, in the line like, do I really want to do this? So uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to say the name of the place, but it is listed as one of the scariest haunted houses attraction type of thing in California. And it's something that has a lot of doors. So if you put two and four together and you know what I'm talking about, it's called something door, okay? 
Okay, boom, we're here in the line. First of all, it's this man, this very, I would just, you know, this was a very Caucasian thing to do. Um, it's this Caucasian man, and he's letting people staple money to him with a staple gun. Like, <laughs> when I seen that, I should have just left. And that was before we signed the waiver, okay? I should have just left, because like, what type of sh is this? Why are you letting, he was letting people staple money to him, like phase, everything, anyways move on we're standing in line um we did like the full attraction type of thing it's like a three bundle thing we did um their field trip what they call it is like you get into like this van and you're kind of like in this movie right you're a character in this movie in there the person who's driving the van is also like a character but he's a worker there and he's setting you up and you gotta do all these different obstacles but they actually you get in the van and they drive away from where like the main maze type of thing is right so we did that one which is like the field trip we did the maze thing which is like this prison um and then we also did the vr type of um bundle deal right so we did the we had the vip pack we get up into the line um and that's where we signed our waivers i'm reading the waiver y'all and it's just like death 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 like if you die you can't really do anything on the building it's like this big ass sign of like trigger warnings right and um the trigger warnings included like uh claustrophobia um phobia of insects triggers of like sa um they have um what water inhalation keep that one in mind water inhalation okay um it's just like a bit a bunch of like just triggers okay and just just warnings that this might occur um so we're in line i'm not really going to discuss too much about like let me just get into it. I just be talking. So <laughs> let me just talk, okay? Boom, let me just tell you about the field trip. I'm not really gonna go into depth about that. It was actually really fun. I wouldn't say this thing was so much like jump scare mazes, like people was popping out. It had a lot to do with like fight or flight. Like I felt like the whole time my life was in danger. Senses simulated, okay? It's like it had a lot to do with your senses and it just stimulated your whole body and it was just scary okay we're in this van with this worker that works there but like the whole gist of it we're prisoners we just escaped the prison right so we drive away um the van is pretty cool the shit starts doing cool stuff okay starts lighting up the whole gist of this ride is to basically steal the drugs and smother the drugs back into the prison okay that was our job as the the prisoners that escaped from jail it was a lot of in and out of the van okay it was like we're in a group of like eight of us and it was a lot of you had to get out the van do some stuff get back in the van it was a lot of like that dude who dropped us off the prisoner i'm gonna just call him bob bob was like all right we're going to my cousin's house i remember he said that he was like we're going to my cousin's house my cousins are a bunch of clowns once he said that i was like ah oh, man I don't really like clowns. I'm a little scared. Um, I don't really like clowns. I'm a little nervous. So we get out and we're having to follow the, his cousin that's a clown. We're going to call him Kyle. So we're following Kyle. The group of us hop out the van. We're following Kyle. Now when we sign this waiver, um, it did say like tasing is going to go on. You can get electrocuted, fire. You can get burned. Um, you could die. Like all this other stuff, right? So we're getting to these clowns and it's like a little part in the screen where he's like don't run into Tracy and Casey because they're crazy they like to light shit up okay that's what he said and I said they like to light shit up hold on y'all gonna kill me so basically you just gotta stay away from Tracy and Casey throughout this thing we're with the clown Kyle and we're going through like this whole little like house it was like a maze it was like a whole like like studio setup okay it was like a movie so we're like running like full speed running then you have to like duck behind stuff be quiet so the clowns won't hear you because they have tasers they have shit on their hand that tase you they got shit that light up like everything that i'm about to describe to you guys was actually real it was like if you get tased you get tased like you sign the waiver <laughs> going through that um that little part right and we're like running hiding ducking blah 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 and we come to this one part where like, we literally all discussed as a group that like, every man for themselves, but kind of just stay together. But like, we running, like all of us in there was African American, except for Brie, but she black at heart. So we like, run for your life, okay? Like keep up, if you don't keep up, I don't know, you just might die. Like, I don't know what to tell you. And it was funny because it was like, um, couples in the group, like some people had like their boyfriend and girlfriend there type of thing. Some people didn't, like we just all like, 
friend group, right? The people who were there with like their boyfriends and girlfriends, they were like coupled up in the beginning and when we had to start running this shit, it was like every man for themselves. Like, boyfriend and girlfriend did not matter because at one point, I was next to this girl's boyfriend like this, like we was locked arms sprinting, okay? I didn't even know this man, but we was sprinting. <laughs> like, it was like life or death. And it was scary. It was really scary. But we came to this one part where I just heard Kyle. I didn't hear him. But now that when people was like, you didn't hear him say that? Like it brought back, like I did hear him. Like my self-conscious heard him, but I didn't hear him. But we was running and we hear Kyle yell, watch out for the tires. Now we're running, looping, sukuping, duping, okay? We have to run through like these little ass, um, little ass hallways. So that's where I guess where the claustrophobia comes in. Little ass hallways, sprinting, running away from these clowns, right? Kyle, watch out for the tires. Now I'm running and I see the tires like kind of in the distance, hanging up. No, nigga, they were on the floor. They were football style. Do, 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 do. Okay, and me, I wasn't looking down because I was fight or flight. I was running for my life. I wasn't trying to get tased. So I'm running full speed. I don't know how I'm getting to the front. But full speed running and the tires, like, I didn't even look down and I just slid across them. Slid full speed across them. And at that point in time, my mind, I said, fuck. All of them are about to trample on top of me because I do not work out. I'm exhausted. I feel like I got asthma. I've never been diagnosed, but I might have asthma. Uh, my chest is burning like I haven't ran this fast in my life in a long time so I'm like trying to catch my breath as we like jogging and hiding these tires come up and I just gotta keep running I just got, I, I ran and I slid I started from this point to this point it was a whole bunch of tires I slid across the whole thing I did I slid across the whole thing then Bree fell on top of me I'm like damn everybody about to fall on top of us but then Bree kind of uses me as just like a whoop like a hurdle. She fall, hop back up and just keep running. I'm like, damn, nah, bitch, you just gonna leave me. I'm waiting for somebody to be like, get up. No, did none of them do that. Every man for himself kicked in. I'm on the floor, they running past me. So I push up and I try to run and my foot get caught in the last tire and my shoe fly off. And in that mist, I'm like, damn, them in my dunks. Damn, should I just run? Damn, should I go back? Do I really need a shoe? And I'm like, yeah, I need a shoe because this is just the beginning of the whole night. I need my shoe. So I'm like, shit, I run a little bit and I turn around and I, as I turn around, it's like this clown come out of nowhere, this girl. I try to reach down to grab my shoe in the tire. She go like this. You can't see me, but she go like this. Her hands light up with electricity. I'm like, oh, shit. She about to shock me. I grab my shoe and I'm running without the shoe. I'm just a running, okay? And that's what happened in there. Um, the whole little field trip place, I guess, took place for like an hour because we was there for a good like three to four hours doing everything. But the field trip itself was like an hour. It was really fun. That like got your, that, that one got your heart rate going, your mind thinking. It really got you in survival mode. Like that little field trip one was fun. I thought it was gonna be a lot of more jump scares than it was, but it wasn't. It was really like a fight or flight. I hope it kind of looks the same because my camera died so I had to charge it. Anyways, back to what I was saying. I don't remember, but just know when we were at the little field trip thing, I got socked in my face and the cheek hurt really bad. It was an accident, but still got socked in my face. Um, almost got electrocuted. I fell over some tires. I got bruises on my legs, broke my toenail. It hurt, it was the big toe too. And um, yeah, get back to like the main attraction type of thing, um, which is like the prison or whatever. And we get in there and then now we're in like this VR part of our, um, VIP package, okay? We get into this room that has a whole bunch of cameras. You have to look dead into the camera and say, I sign the waiver, because this is when she's about to get real. This is when the waiver comes into place, okay? And you have to make sure that you said I signed the waiver. They made us say it like three different times on three different occasions, like, they make sure they wasn't about to get sued for this. We signed this waiver, we knew that we can die at any point in this, you know? Okay, so, boom, we're into the VR situation. We go into this room. Um, it's pretty cool how they had it set up because the room actually moves back and forth. But you're kind of set up into, like, I would say, 
they made it seem like we were on death row. So like the electrocution chairs that they have that you see in like movies and stuff, that's what we had to sit in. Um, we sit down, they put on the VR, they put on the earphones. And then when you have that everything on, they come around and they strap you to the chair. So you're like this on the chair. They strap your arms to the point where you can't move. Like I tried to lift up and it was like, got serious, okay? So we're watching this show, whatever. The whole thing is kind of like, you're a prisoner on death row and you're about to get electrocuted. And that's exactly what happened. So in this whole little prison, they make sure that you know your safe word. So the safe word that they give you is mercy. Um, you can say at any point in time, they'll stop what they're doing. They'll take you out and make sure like you're good, right? So they make sure that they tell you that every room and they're very good at hearing you say it, okay? Like they're very good. So we're sitting down there like, if you need to say it at any point in time, let us know. Now me, this is the first little interaction inside of the prison. I'm thinking that if you say this safe word, everyone in your groups, Whatever they got going on stops, right? They just take your whole group, move it to a different thing. No, that's not what happened. I soon realized that only your person gets put out of the, the simulation that's going on, okay? So we're in here, um, we're in the chair or whatever, stuff starts happening. Then you got people in the room coming up and touching you while you're watching the thing. It was just a lot of sensations going on that was really scary, but you're watching this whole little thing um, and the things that they strap onto your arms are actually like tasers. <laughs> That's my best way to describe it. I was gonna say like shocks. No, they're tasers. Like it's it's a taser. And I realized that it hurts a little less when you relax. It hurt a lot, but it hurts just a little less when you relax. So the thing starts tasing us or whatever. And I hear a girl in my group next to me scream. Like when it tased, she was like, fuck! And like it tased again. She was like, mercy! And I'm like, who look like thank you because it hurt so we all about to stop and i realized like we all kept going and like the room itself like um moved like the whole room your, your chair moved it was like a ride it was actually really fun it was really cool how they had everything set up but it really hurt the whole thing's moving back and forth whatever shit shocking you and like in the in the whole little camera thing the doctor who we're seeing in our screen is turning up this cranker and as he's turning up them them tases is hurt it's getting stronger and stronger. I'm like, fuck, should I just say it? Should I just say it? But like, at this point, I'm already in and I already learned, like, just relax a little bit. It hurt. It hurt really bad to the point, like, when all that was done, they took it off of us. And you can see, like, where the tase was going into your arms. I had, like, dents in my arms. It hurt so bad. But that was cool. Like, I've never done anything like that. I was like, oh my God, we're really idiots. So that was like the first room, move on to the second one. I'm not gonna go through like all the rooms because that's just a lot. It was a lot of room. Each room itself was very different. It was really fucking cool. Like, it was just really cool. Every room triggered a sense of yours, right? Every room heightened a sense. Every room got that sense going that made your body fight or flight. Like, everything was just fight or flight. Everything was so like, sensational like it was weird okay it wasn't a lot of jump scares in there either it was some but like i'm thinking like a halloween maze that was gonna be like scary but no this maze was like <laughs> are you ready to die type of thing right so we get to this one room and we're inside of like the prison or whatever so like each room is like a prison type of thing so we get into this one where it's like prison showers mind you wait let me rewind so when we're in line waiting to go into the prison a lot of people are walking out drenched a lot of people are walking out a little bit wet. A lot of people are walking out soaking wet. A lot of people are not wet at all, okay? And this one girl walks out while we're in line and she was like, when you get to that water, mercy, 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 cause you gonna drown. And I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? So fast forward to when we walk into the shower room, it was like a prison showers or whatever, right? And they say like, when the lights light up, make sure you're not underneath the water or you're gonna get soaked. So we get into this room and it's like a whole bunch of showers and you have to like wiggle like a little snake through the obstacle, but like the lights come up, it's lights flashing, when the lights shine, the water. So like as soon as we get into that room, um, the lights start going off, I'm my whole back of my pants are soaking wet. So I'm like, okay, this is where the water effect comes in too, right? Yeah, it was, but like, let me finish talking. So <laughs> the water came into effect or whatever and I'm like, okay, cool, we go through that room wet. I'm wet wet so i'm like damn that was fun or whatever 
but like damn this is why people are wet like why were people saying mercy to that so like wet so we're going through the rest of the rooms or whatever they're all fun like i said i'm not gonna talk about every room i'm just talk, talk to you guys about the rooms i was about to die in so we get to this one room and it's like um i thought it was gonna actually be you know the rides like the wonder woman ride at six flies that spin you um i thought it was gonna be one of those and i hate being dizzy and i get dizzy so fast so i was like oh if this ride if this room starts spinning your girl is out so we sit down to the chair and it's like a roller coaster ride type of thing that they come over. But it comes over and then you have like um, numbers in front of you that you press, like the buttons, right? I'm wet. I sit down, they do this, and they're like, okay, choose a button, hurry up. I pick a button. Mind you, at this point in time, we didn't know like what this was. But after the fact, we realized that our chairs were numbered. And if you press the button on your chair, it shocks the person whose number you picked that's sitting there, right? So we're all sitting in the chair. The first little press the button. I guess somebody pushed my chair. I don't even know what number I was in. Somebody pushed my chair and mother, when I tell you the whole backside of my body to my ankles lit up and like, it felt like needles went through me, but it hurt so bad and it was like a shock. You know, like the tase guns that just grab onto you and like shock you that's what the fuck it was through my whole body like from like here to my ankles and i was wet so it made it worse so when that when that button went off and it's my i'm sitting in the chair and you're like kind of tight okay let me turn i'm sitting like this and you're kind of tight my whole body went like this like it hurt so bad i was like mercy! like that's what i did i was like mercy and like i seen the girl who was working she looked at me and i'm like mercy Cause that shit hurt so like I wasn't going through that again not at all so they um lift me up and I walked and I waited I watched everybody else and um the girl who screamed mercy let me just give her a name because she's really cool um Christina so <laughs> Christina was next to me I guess her chair didn't get hit so she didn't feel it she was not for another shock she told me like if we're shocking I'm mercy I guess her chair didn't go off but when her chair did she screamed mercy to the top of her lungs and i'm like yeah girl it hurt like it hurt so bad and then after that we realized like okay each chair you were sitting in was getting tased or whatever but i don't know what type of tasers those was but those hurt so bad like i feel like wow i can honestly say i've been tased before but what i also liked about this it's like every room kind of has like a sign that says like disclaimer this is what's gonna happen not what's gonna happen but like if you have any type of like neck problems or like heart conditions like don't do this type of thing right and that's what i liked it was like this one room that was like don't turn around or you'll get shot in the face and i was like oh my god and then actually like people were shooting stuff at us but like thank you so much for telling me sorry you know <laughs> we come to this one room that was really cool i think that was like the funnest room um we were in and it starts spinning you know the pictures that you take where it looks like you're on the ceiling but you're actually on the floor of real life like stuff like that so the whole room was spinning and we had to like pop up run to the other side while the other side it was just really fun and then we come to like the last room the last room which is like the da -da -da door like i said i don't know if i can say it. i don't know if they gonna suit me um but we come to the last room and this is the room that y'all gonna have to pay me to go back like i'll go back but i'm for sure mercering out of this room okay i'm for sure saying mercy i would never do it again unless you pay me and i would do it for a good 10 10 bands you got it i will do it um because now i know like what to do you know so we come to the last room and how this room was set up first of all the worker there she was really rude like i don't know if we was like towards the end of the night we were towards the end of the night because it was like one o'clock at this time but like girl she said like her voice is going she's been screaming all day and we're sitting here like oh what is this like we walk into different rooms like oh my god everybody's like talking we're talking about the last room like shook and she's like shut the fuck up like come here and listen to me shut up i'm like all right bitch hold on like relax um so it's just just like this cage right it's like a big ass cage with little ass slots she comes to us and say there's a lock at the end of the tunnel is because you have to crawl to the lock so she's like it's a lock at the end of the tunnel this is the combination gives us the combination i forgot I, i'm gonna just say like 1738 because i'm thinking about fetty wap oh poor fetty wap y'all heard about him anyways so she tells us like oh it's a lock at the end of the tunnel the combination is 1738 if you want a mercy out now please say it if not get your ass in the box i'm like girl like that's how fast she was talking she was like if you want a mercy out say it right now if not get your ass in the box so she gives us the combination i look around and i'm like 
something in my body told me not to like like you know your in my intuition was like no like my first instinct was like hell no but then everybody ran into the boxes and i'm like i don't want to be a little bitch so let me crawl my ass into this box so i'm army crawling trying to get to the end of the tunnel to do the combination when i get down there it's the old combinations the one that has like you got to scroll through the numbers to get to the right number and line them up exactly. And as I was scrolling to the first one, trying to put in that one, then I go to the second one, trying to put in that seven, the one starts spinning because my nails, and I, I plan to just bite this shit off and go because as I'm in there scrolling, um, the roof, the roof start coming down and it's, squ it's squishing you. But it's like padded, but it's squishing you to the point where you're like, <gasps> you start like, holy fuck. And I guess that's another thing where the claustrophobia comes in. And I'm very claustrophobic. Like that scares me. So I start getting like, Whoa! in the box, you can't do this. Like you're laying down in a box like this big, honestly, and it's a long ass tunnel. And you can't do this. I, you couldn't really turn around if you wanted to. It's like one way in, one way out type of thing. And the damn thing starts squishing me. You're laying on your stomach. You're getting squished from your back. And it's starting to hurt. Like how far down is this thing gonna squish you? Like I'm panicking because I'm getting squished. I'm claustrophobic. I'm trying to do the numbers. It's pissing me off because my nails keep changing the combination. The lock not opening. When I feel the thing start squishing you, I'm screaming mercy, but at this point, they can't take you out because everyone is in the same type of thing. So that's why she said, say it first before you go in there, because once you're in there, you cannot. Like this is the one time you cannot say it while you're in there, but instinct, I start screaming mercy because I was getting very claustrophobic and I was scared and like in the midst of all this, you guys, I felt that mother, like the box is like, the cage is like this. I, I, okay, don't save some lives. You should have saved my life on October 31st. The cage is like this. That shit went like this. Like in 0.6 seconds, that shit went through. And in 0.6 seconds when that shit went like this, underwater. You are underwater, full blown drowning. Like, I, like you're underwater. My eyes closed. I don't even know. Was my, no, my eyes were closed. Because it's, it's still kind of dark in the tunnel. And they just have a little light flashing on the light. And you're trying to like do the combination. The shit squishing you. And in 0.6 seconds, you're underwater. And my whole thought process, like, I forgot people was getting drenched. And I just thought it was like the shower getting them that wet. And I'm like, how? Like, what? So when I got wet in the showers i'm like oh this is why people were a little wet this is why people were soaking wet because then you know they were standing underneath the water so i'm underwater you don't get a chance to take a deep breath well at least i didn't because i was already panicking because i'm getting squished you know but they don't give you a time to catch your breath so i'm sitting there doing the combination getting squished i'm underwater it's like a blink of an eye you're underwater and bitch i'm under there and i went into panic mode i panicked um to a point where i gulped in water i swallowed water a good three times then i don't know like what happened but i swallowed the water and i was like "Ooh, you're underwater like and i tried to lift up and it's like no you can't move because the thing is still squishing you and i'm like oh like i need to breathe my body automatically was like oh you need to breathe so i breathe in through my nose that shit hurt so bad when i tell you i've never really been scared of drowning like if me it was like drowning or fire like i feel like i would rather drown than be burnt alive but in that moment i was like i didn't know this is what drowning felt like like it hurts so bad like when i swallowed the water that kind of hurt a little bit but when i inhaled that water and i think that's why i sound like this when i inhaled that water that shit hurt so bad and in that moment i panicked a lot more because i needed to breathe or i knew for a fact i was going to drown now this whole time i was under this water it felt like i was under there a good three minutes I swear it was probably like six to seven seconds that they had us underwater. Um, a good two more seconds, a good second more, I would have drowned. And like, what scared me the most is because like, the whole time I'm underwater trying to like calm down, I'm freaking out because I need to breathe and I inhale the water, shit's hurting. And then Layden's face flashed in my head. Like I've seen my son's face 
and my body instantly calmed down. And then I thought, oh fuck, you signed the waiver. This is why you signed the waiver because you might die. Like people have probably died. And I'm a very overthinker. Like I overthink and my anxiety just takes off when I do that. Like I calmed down for a slight second because I was like, I'm just holding my breath. When I seen Layden's face, I was like, I can't die. I have a whole son to live for. So I kind of just like calmed down and just tried to hold my breath. But I needed to catch a breath so bad that I start panicking again and like that fast. And then like I'm underwater, eyes closed like this because I couldn't breathe. So I'm like hitting the sides of the thing and I'm screaming mercy underwater. And I didn't know anybody can hear me, but we're all in the cage. And my friend, like when we got out, he told me, he was like, I literally heard you screaming. And I'm like, I almost died. Like, so I'm underwater like doing this. And as I'm doing this, the thing lifts up and the lock well wherever the lock was that door slides up and we're still kind of angled i slid out of the cage like i slid out to a point when i slid out i was burping because all the water i had inhaled i was burping and i was on the floor like <gasps> and the worker was like oh my god are you okay and i'm sitting there i can't talk and then they're like trying to hurry up and get us out so the next group like they can do the machine so the next group coming in doesn't really see what happens so she's like go 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 and i'm like trying to get up thinking about all this that just happened to me and then they throw us into the room where they take a picture of us like at the end of the ride and i'm sitting there like in the picture dying but yeah that was the time i almost died and after that i walked outside in 60 degree weather and i was drenched head to toe and i'm like how wasn't everyone else this soaking wet coming out but then a lot of people were saying they mercyed out like we seen the little white girls after and was like no i could not do that so i was like oh okay my camera's about to die let me talk a little faster i was actually like coughing up mucus like substance that was like very like thick like slime it wasn't like regular mucus when you're sick it was like slime and i think it was my lungs to be honest but yeah that's what happened to me i um, almost drowned on halloween and i wouldn't be here to tell you guys the story because literally two more seconds i would have drowned like that's the closest i've ever been to death and it scared the living hell out of me so yeah if you have a um life or death situation it seems like something always happens to me on halloween leave it down in the comment section can't wait to hear it and on that note i love you guys bye